Okay, so we are um, doing melanocytic unknowns today. So, you want to lead off? Sure, so we have a pretty broad shape here, so I want to take a look at the melanocyte to the basal layer. Super symmetric. It doesn't really start and end in the nest. We worry about some sort of MIS. Okay. Tell me about the dermis. It's pretty busy. Pretty busy, and most of the fibroblast nuclei are going what direction? Uh, east west. And most of the vessels are going what direction? North south. So, what do you think is in the dermis? Yeah, is there a biopsy site or something? So there's a scar. Mm -hmm. So implies that this irregularly nested junctional lesion is could just be a recurrent nevus. As could well. just be recurrent nevus. So you don't know. It could mm -hmm. also be recurrent melanoma. Right. So the answer is not in this specimen right. at all, but in the prior specimen. Right. Which is often the you know, the case is with recurrent lesions that you really have to get a hold of the prior. So another broad shave. Mm. No real greatness. Looks like there's maybe a little bit of confluence. There's some nest like in the sebaceous glands. So runs down ethnexal structures, fairly broad, <coughs> doesn't end in a nest. In fact, it's not terribly well nested anywhere. Mm -hmm. You have some of these multinucleate so-called starburst cells mm -hmm. at the DE junction. So, so worried about MIS. Yeah, absolutely. So worried about melanoma in situ. It's predominantly at the DE junction on sun damaged skin, so that's uh, lentiginous type, specifically lentigo malignant type. of anything at the junction? Not too much. So not much of anything at the junction. Um, I mean, it looks like it's fairly well set. It's fairly favor like an intradermal nevus. So favor like an intradermal nevus. And the cells themselves. Some of them are kind of spindled. Yeah, some are spindled, some are epithelioid. Mm -hmm. They have vesicular nuclei, very prominent nucleoli. Some of those nuclei red. Yeah. So They're in fascicles that have sort of a north-south configuration. And down in the dermis they become smaller and sort of break up towards individual units. So any type of intradermal nevus that's composed of large spindle and epithelioid yeah, cells. Like an intradermal spitz. Yeah, like an intradermal spitz. And intradermal spitz um, can be solitary cells, can be large fascicles like this. You don't get any of the hyperkeratosis, hypergranulosis, pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia unless you have a junctional component. So in an intradermal, you often don't see any of that. So at first glance, it may not look as spitzy to you as, as some. So at 
the junction. It's very busy, lots of melanocytes. Um, but it ends pretty abruptly. Um, so it seems to end okay. pretty abruptly in a nest. But you said it's quite broad. Mm -hmm. Is is the inflammatory reaction symmetrical across the field? Or does the pattern of inflammation change from one it end to the other? Changes is the epithelium the symmetrical across the field or does the epithelial yeah, pattern change? It changes too. I guess some of the areas are more faced than others. Yeah, so you look at the epithelium, the inflammatory infiltrate, pigment, as well as the melanocytic nests. Mm -hmm. So all components are asymmetrical across the field. It's broad. Are your nests nice and round to oval at tips and sides of Ruby, <coughs> or do they have bizarre shapes in odd locations? And yeah. some areas at least where non-nested units predominate mm -hmm. over nests? Non-nested, right. Mm -hmm. So, your assessment? Uh, probably melanoma. Yeah, melanoma, and in this case everything we saw was at the junction, so in situ. Mm -hmm. Bridging of reedy, concentric fibrosis, round to oval <laughs> nests at tips and sides of reedy, nothing in the arches. It's kind of like a junctional Clark's. Like a junctional Clark's nevus. What's with all of this? Like tattoo pigment or monster cells or something? You are correct, tattoo pigment. So nevus that looked very, very dark because it was a tattoo um, within the you know, they coincided with the nevus. So just to show the difference between tattoo pigment and nevus pigment. So the lymphocytes are mixing throughout in a friendly fashion where they're all mingling and that is the pattern of a halo nevus you are correct this looks like a spindle cell nodule in the dermis Okay, spindle cell nodule in the dermis. Maybe it's just vesicular. Mm. It's in desmoplastic stroma. And in terms of symmetry, mm. is it symmetrical side to side? Yes. Is it symmetrical top to bottom? Is that a good thing? No. no. What is symmetrical in all dimensions and all directions is a nodule, right? A mat. So that is most likely metastatic melanoma. So we always talk about symmetry like it's good, but that's bilateral symmetry. Top to bottom symmetry and radial symmetry go with a metastasis. Very broad. What are all of these pink things in the dermis? Mm, basement memory thing. Or um, savat bodies? Savat body, yeah. So cytoid body or savat body and pigment incontinence. Is your basal layer intact? No. Or is it squamatized? Squamatized. So 
How would you describe the inflammatory process? It's not so like a noise. Yeah, it's a it's a late, late. lichenoid. So okay. late burnt out lichenoid reaction, which can leave a lot of pigment. We're on sun damaged skin. So tell me about broad lichenoid reactions on sun damaged skin. It's not so like yeah, okay. So not, uh, it makes you worry that it may not be benign lichenoid keratosis. Yeah. So it makes you worry that it may be lichenoid regression of? Of lichenoid regression of melanoma. Lichenoid regression of melanoma. So r remember your differential for lichenoid dermatitis includes um, lichen planus, Lichen planus like drug, acra lupus, graft versus host, benign lichenoid keratosis, but also lichenoid regression of melanoma. And that the biopsy is often broader because they're looking for a broad pigmented lesion and it's often on sun damaged skin. So those are clues. So that was lichenoid regression of melanoma. What color are they typically? Uh, that's the problem, is half of them are amelanotic and pink with a rule out BCC differential on the chest or back, just like a BLK. Yeah, exactly. That's where Jen McNiff said those studies struck fear into the hearts <laughs> of pathologists everywhere. Um, you just, you want to know what the total size of the lesion was that was biopsied. If you're seeing a piece of something significantly larger, there may be role for caution, clinical correlation, additional biopsy. So melanocyte proliferation on the DJ. Looks like you do have some bridging right there in the center. I'm trying to see how far out it goes. Does it go down that adnexal structure at all? And where where do you think you are? On the face. Maybe with demodex mites. Um, you know, it, it could be something like forehead. So you were saying bridging, concentric fibrosis, sounds a lot like a Clark's nevus. Are you happy with that on the forehead? No. How many Clark's nevi have you seen on foreheads? Not a lot. Not a lot. But you have to be cautious because hairline nevi can look very similar to our Clark's nevus, right? So hairline nevus can be completely benign and look like a Clark's nevus, but if you're away from the hairline and elsewhere on the face, you're probably dealing with lenticular malignant. <coughs> All faded. Pass that out. Can the wedge-shaped uh, proliferation of blue-gray cells, prime melanocytes, seem to maybe be down? I mean, I think uh, they have to be separating the single units maybe at the base. Yeah, so question is maybe, maybe. right? So here they look like maybe they're separating into single units. Elsewhere, they're remaining nested at the base. They're kind of amphiphilic and gray. You have occasional little bits in the epidermis. You've got a mitotic figure right there, but it's at a, in a junctional nest, so that may or may not mean much of anything. So, I kind of think this fits for me, like a special site. So a variant of spits or special site nevus or epidermotropic metastasis. You know, it's not broad. It doesn't have much of a junctional component. So that would be your differentialist. This is either a benign spitzy kind of nevus or this is epidermotropic metastasis. So prior history would be very important. You know, how is this one of... 30 things in the zone around the pre prior melanoma that are popping up as little um, little papules and nodules 
Or is this an isolated lesion that's been there a long time? Is the collagen more red? Does it suggest a younger? So collagen is a little bit on the reddish side. Um, suggests it's not very fibroplastic, but finer red or collagen does suggest maybe a younger person, which is um, very clever on your part, because <laughs> that um, would certainly push you more towards spits. Um, the, the other key would be um, to look at things like uh, key 67, HMB 45, um, you know, those are, they're not always helpful, but if there's no maturation gradient at all with HMB, <coughs> and if there's a proliferative fraction greater than 10% with MIB, that certainly would, um, would drive your final analysis, and that was an epidermotropic metastasis mm. of melanoma. Here, Oops. I'll retrieve that later. Here, oh, I can. Okay, I'm gonna get it to where you can start looking at that. Here, it's up here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so it looks like we have um, a lot of inflammation in the DEJ. So inflammation, and so does that inflammation wall off the lesion? Does it mix in with the lesion, or is it undecided? It kind of wants a little bit of both. It wants to party, but it wants Yeah, to exactly. Place. So it's undecided, right? <laughs> so inflammation pattern's not helping me, right? In areas, it looks like it's clearly mixing, like a halo mm -hmm. nevus pattern. In other areas, maybe it's a little more walling off, so that doesn't really help me so much. Is the lesion broad, or is it fairly well circumscribed? It's pretty well circumscribed. And in a nest? It does. In the base, is there a dermal component? There that, is. And mm -hmm. does it remain a nodule, or does it, it sort of break up? Out. Yeah, yeah, sort of matures in the dermis. So would probably be more inflamed nevus right. than melanoma based on the architecture, which is what it was called. I'm very, uh, I think it's a and, uh, and the Nest, uh, uh, so irregularly nested, some no. junctional atypia, the nests are not similar in size and shape, they're certainly not equidistant from one another, and underlying it, horizontally oriented fibroblasts, vertically oriented vessels, so, so there's scar underneath it, so just as with our first one, which this dramatically resembles, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> could be recurrent nevus, could be recurrent melanoma. You need to know what the prior fusion was. I like that one. Let's go back to something else here. Okay, so this is a lymph node, and in the septum of the node, we're really not out by capsule, but in the septum you have these clusters of melanocytes. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? Um. So, they don't look extremely abnormal. Yeah, exactly. They're pretty bland, mm -hmm. right? They look like nevus cells. So what are nevus cells doing in a lymph node? It's really common. 
So this is uh, um, set a node that was not done for melanoma, it was done for breast. And it's really common in breast nodes, you see nevi. So nevi tend to be in the capsule or septum. Melanoma tends to be in the subcapsular space. Melanoma has atypia, nevi are planned. Um, size also helps. Um, Scott Dalton did a very nice paper where he um, looked at the mutations in the original melanoma and the mutations in what was in the node to show, you know, to prove on a molecular basis whether it was the same melanoma or different, nevus, and showed that it correlated very well with the melanoma cells being on average three times the size of the nevus cells when present in a, in a node. And so his point was not that you do molecular in every case. He used molecular to prove that 99% of the time you probably can do H and E because melanoma cells in a node are subcapsular and look big, bad, and ugly, whereas neva cells are small and not atypical and tend to be in capsule and septum. Do you see a lot going on at the junction? Um, no, just some crust in the corner. Just some crust. Yeah. And there, is, there are some oh, junctional yeah. nests, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, not a whole lot, though. And what do you think about the... I mean, I guess it kind of matures. I think it doesn't... Mm, the bottom does look different than the top, but... Let's also look at the cytology of the cells, so we are <coughs> pretty far down mm -hmm. in, the, in the dermis, and what do we see in pretty far it's down in the dermis? Seeing mitoses. Mm -hmm. Also, how would you describe <laughs> the morphology of cells that have an ample red cytoplasm and the nucleus squashed over to the side of the cell, like mm -hmm. a rhabdomyoblast. Mm -hmm. So they get called rhabdoid, right? Rhabdoid melanocytes are typically not only melanoma, but high-grade melanoma, and this is probably a mat, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So probably another epidermotropic metastasis, there are mitoses, it's sheets of rhabdoid melanocytes. Rhabdoid in the melanocytic world would be a bad, bad <coughs> thing. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is look at the shapes of the nuclei. Are they round to oval or are they bizarre squares and triangles? Often strange. with notches in them, solid hyperchromasia, um, notched nuclear envelope, all of those features, you know, shapes that are not round to oval, hyperchromasia, um, pepper moth chromatin pattern, um, all of those things cytologically point towards melanoma. Rhabdoid, sheets of rhabdoid cells is bad. So, epidermotropic metastasis. Lymphocytes and melanocytes. Overall, is the lesion broad or well circumscribed? It's pretty well circumscribed. Ends in a nest or ends in non nested melanocytes? It looks like it's, it looks like it's ending in a nest. That and the lymphocytes, are they, given that these are also melanocytes, are the lymphocytes at the periphery walling it off 
or are they mixed in with the melanocytes? So what do you su suggest this is? Probably a halo nephus. And then you looked at a fair number of blue nevi and spitz nevi in your weekly unknowns. We're going to switch this box is a little heavier on melanoma and I wanted you at your stage to see <coughs> some of the melanoma variants. Especially epidermotropic metastasis because you don't want to miss those. I'm sorry, you had a question? Or? Oh no, I can take the box if that's in the way. Uh, I have a lot there. Nah, we're okay. fine. Okay. Down deep, you have a collection of pigments, and kind of, I think they're kind of spindle cell. So. There's and also is there uh, anything up at the yeah, junction? There's a junctional component too, so like maybe a combined name is. And the junctional component, is it broad? No. Is it poorly nested? No. Are the nests irregular shapes? Um, they're kind of oblong. But yeah, kind of, but they're all about the same. They're about the same, yeah. Right. Um, so it's small, well circumscribed, well nested. They're all oval, they're similar in size and shape, so that part certainly looks benign, right? And then you have your dermal part, and the dermal part, if you stain it, most of this is just melanophage. And you can kind of tell by the coarse granularity that they're melanophages rather than melanocytes. And the melanocytes are these guys with their little small nuclei, kind of hyperchromatic smudged chromatin pattern, but predominantly they're still round to oval nuclei. So what kind of combined nevus might this be? Mm. Uh, this one looks kind of like a blue or like, well, or more like DPN, maybe. Yeah, like deep penetrating nevus population. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And so at Tulane, they call that common combined nevus because it was the most common combined nevus that got sent to Dick Reed in consultation because they looked scary to people. So an ordinary blue, common blue nevus <laughs> with a overlying nevus, everyone recognized that. No one sent them to Tulane. Whereas this one they were sending, right? So that's how it got that name, common combined nevus. Um, you can also say deep penetrating nevus population in a in a banal nevus or a form of combined nevus. Any of those would be fine. Yeah, so acanthalysis um, specifically refers to yeah. a acanthocytes mm -hmm. or epidermal cells, but it's the same kind of poorly cohesive pattern, right? So they're not very cohesive. And then are the nuclei similar in size and shape or do they vary in size and shape? So they're on the large side, they vary in size and shape. Um, much of it does not have epidermal involvement. What would you call this kind of morphology where the nucleus is squashed to the side and there's ample red cytoplasm? And so, and is rhabdoid usually warm and fuzzy in a melanocytic lesion? Yeah. Not warm and fuzzy, right? So now we're worried about epidermotropic metastasis again. And so you look across the field and there's really very little epidermal involvement at all. Right? Up here you've got a little, and the epidermal involvement you have is not terribly nice. It's certainly not round to oval nests at the junction. It's irregularly shaped nests at various 
heights within the epidermis. So with all of that, I would suspect that that again is metastatic disease. So that looks like normal nevus, or that, that looks does. like normal nevus? looks like more normal than the rest. So you certainly have confluence at the junction, involvement of the arches. Looks like both, probably. Like You've got a zipper yeah. sign where you have a separation at the DE junction. That's because there are no um, attachment plaques in a melanocyte. So that separation that happens during processing is common in melanoma, especially when it happens in the arch. So fairly broad, irregularly nested lesion at the junction. And then when I look at these two populations, I would say this one sits down in the dermis, is composed of very small bland melanocytes, looks like a pre-existing nevus, that's part of the melanoma right there. When you look, see this redder stroma that goes with the melanoma? You can sort of see that that stroma continues all the way down to there and sort of makes a U under those. When you look at the red stroma here, see how there's no, no white space really within that stroma, no clefts, it's all squashed and compact red and you have these parallel theeks that run parallel to the surface horizontally there. That's a melanoma pattern in the dermis. So parallel theek pattern within compact red stroma goes with melanoma. In this case, this area I would say is melanoma, this area I would say is nevus. When it comes to measuring the depth, I'd measure the melanoma to here, but not include the nevus. Hideko Camino in New York showed very nicely that you can use elastic fibers to show which is nevus and which is melanoma, because the nevus retains elastic fibers all through it, and most, not all, but most melanomas are bossy and snow plow elastic fibers out of the way. So you would see all of this blue here is where the elastic fibers have been pushed out of the way. And you know, just like a snow plow pushes snow to the edge of the road, all of that would be elastic fibers snow plowed at the edge of the advancing melanoma. Whereas you'd expect elastic fibers to be nicely retained within the part that's nevus. So that, that can be helpful when you're looking at which bit is the pre-existing nevus and which bit is the melanoma. So possibly deep penetrating nevus or blue nevus given that it's a almost triangular wedge shaped. Blue nevi tend to be wedge shaped or bulbous they often like to be centered around hair follicles. Metastatic melanoma also loves to be centered around hair follicles. One of the ways you can tell the difference again is to look at the stroma. So if you, let's see if we can do a little diffraction here. See how, look up at the screen. See how the dermal collagen gets very, very bright, but the collagen around that blue nevus kind of blacks out that's what you should see in a benign blue nevus. If the collagen is the same in the dermis and in the melanocytic lesion, that's probably metastatic melanoma. So blue, blue nevus versus melanoma. One of the things that can help is the stroma and you can look with elastic fibers, you can look via diffraction. Those are, can both be helpful. <coughs> 
Um, <coughs> looks like we have some sort of special stain. The special stain is, a, of the is in crappy H and E, <laughs> <laughs> or crappy H and E. Yeah, and you know <coughs> sometimes it's sent in to us partly because of kind technical of issues, so people are not comfortable reading them. Kind of looks like a watercolor painting down in the. It does look the like dermis. a watercolor <laughs> painting down in the dermis. It's something I mean, you'd like to hang on your wall. You have confluence of linocytes. I think those linocytes up in the DEJ. Yeah, as um, long as it's on your wall and not on you, that would be <laughs> fine. As long as it's not on your face. So you have confluence, it's quite broad. I'd say lenigo maligna or MIS. Yeah, it's predominantly um, at the DE junction, thing. so a lenigo maligna type of melanoma in situ would be most likely. Okay, this is from the ankle of an 18 year old and was solidly attached to the tendon. And it's sheets of these clear cells, sort of compressed vessel and stroma between these long oval clear cell nests. So on the extremity of a young person, down in the deep soft tissue near the tendon, often on the ankle, what kind of clear cell? Sarcoma. So clear cell sarcoma, which also is called malignant melanoma of soft parts. Mm -hmm. It has a characteristic translocation that you can look for by fish. And it's a young person's tumor. So it's a young person on the extremity, often the ankle, deep soft tissue type of tumor. So clear cell sarcoma, whether or not you consider it part of the melanoma spectrum, it has its own characteristic translocation. And it's a, it's definitely a young person's tumor. Okay. There's a couple of nests. Looks like it mostly starts in nests and ends in nests. So, is it broad or yeah. fairly well circumscribed? It's pretty small. It's well pretty circumscribed. Pretty small, well circumscribed. Ends in a nest mm -hmm. on either side. Right. The nests are a little bit spindly, or have spindled cells. Definitely spindly. Now, are they large, like spits, or are they small? They're pretty, well, some, two are large, three are large, the rest are smaller. Uh, the nests themselves. How about the melanocytes within oh. them? They're a good size. Um, <laughs> I'd say, you know, compared to a spitz cell, I mean, they're, they're pretty small compared sure. to a spitz. But sure. they are definitely spindled. Mm -hmm. And they're pretty much purely spindled. There is some buckshot scatter, but right. it's restricted to the center of the lesion. So if this was on the proximal extremity of a young woman, the sharply circumscribed, eruptive, dark lesion composed of small spindle cells with buckshot scatter restricted to the center of the lesion. Maze isn't here, it's Reed. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you, John Mays does categorize this as a small cell variant of spitz, which many people do. And then at Tulane, they... Um, honor Dr. Reed, calling it the pigmented spindle cell nevus of Reed, and either way is fine. Right? It's a it's a recognizable entity that if you're a lumper is a part of the spitz, spitz spectrum that's a little bit different because it's deeply pigmented, small spindle cells on the proximal extremity of a young woman. And if you're a splitter, it's a different entity because they're smaller, deeply pigmented on the proximal extremities of a young woman. So, um, okay, so I think we reviewed some of the melanoscopic stuff pretty well. We try to do for the upper years half of the session potpourri where you don't know what chapter it's coming from because at this point you know 
the sum total of all human knowledge <laughs> <laughs> that seems to escape you the first year you go out into practice, but <laughs> in second and third year, it's pretty comfortable, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, you know, the, the problem second or third year is that people have a nasty habit of not responding to standard therapy <laughs> and not following the rules in terms of presentation. One might say an annoying habit of doing those things. <laughs> and, uh, I see the, the, the tape here, uh, so it's nice to in the, you know, uh, uh, sclerotic stroma, so... Uh, so sclerotic stroma, the nests are a little bit large. So differential? Yes. Uh, it's... Uh, it isn't like the uh, I mean paisley tie. Well, some of it does look a little paisley tie-like. Mm -hmm. So tell me about your paisley tie differential. Uh, desmoplastic uh, EP, EP, uh, IP. So desmoplastic trichoepithelioma, if it's a stable, donut-shaped, grayish-white, pale lesion on the cheek of a young woman, um, what if there are tiny little papules on the eyelids of an Asian female? Syringoma. Syringoma. What okay. if it's an expanding plaque on the upper lip of a 50-year-old? My, microcystic adnexal carcinoma. And if it's an expanding scar-like lesion in an older person? Morpheiform BCC. And this one, we really don't know the history, but we see some solar elastosis, and the, um, this turned out to be a morpheiform BCC. Hmm. Piece of it that just looks a little paisley tied. So there's acanthosis, there's a central like little ulcer with crust. So definitely central crust. Don't know about the ulcer part because I still see epithelium. Okay. But definitely impetigenized crust. You see staph colonies mm -hmm. up there. Um, let's see. So if there's a tibia in there, I would say bowen. Why do all these cells have all these little, little vacuoles in them? Little droplet-like vacuoles of like glycogen or clear cells? Maybe? So glycogen or um, they look kind of similar yeah. to those vacuoles mm -hmm. over there. Yeah, so some sort of sebaceous neoplasm. So if it's a sebaceous neoplasm and you can see how these are much more basaloid, they're not as well mm -hmm. differentiated as what's next door, but they still form lobules kind of like what's next door. Where in the spectrum do you think you are? Like an adenoma? Yeah, probably sebaceous adenoma is about where I would put this. Um, so sebaceous epithelioma, some people regard as more like basal cell with sebaceous differentiation. Um, sebaceous adenoma is more lobular. Some people use a 50% differentiation cutoff. Um, for adenoma versus epithelioma, but I'm not sure anyone believes that 49% versus 51% is really a different tumor. Um, anything that this is a marker for? Um, to neurotoid? Miratory syndrome, and Miratory syndrome has what? Case, gut carcinoma. So gut carcinoma, autosomal dominant, it's a variant of Lynch syndrome or familial non polyposis gut carcinoma um, that presents with sebaceous neoplasms and keratoacanthomas. The sebaceous neoplasms tend to be benign. KAs, you can argue whether that's a benign lesion or a form of squamous cell. And the gut carcinomas, there's no question, they are carcinoma. Uh, high grade or low grade gut carcinoma? tend to be low-grade. A lot of the bumpy face, 
malignancy syndromes, they're high grade tumors. Muratory is the opposite. Just like Lynch, they tend to be lower grade carcinomas. And we used to do immunohistochemistry to look for microsatellite instability. The problem is there's evolving data that microsatellite instability is needed to grow a sebaceous adenoma, but the majority of sebaceous adenomas are not in people with Lynch. Mm -hmm. So it's like looking for neurofibromin mutation in a neurofibroma. You're going to find it. Doesn't mean the person has von Recklinghausen's. Mm -hmm. So the Mayo group has pushed for a clinical grid that gives an idea of risk of associated muratory and when it is cost effective and when it's not cost effective to do molecular gene testing. Looks like we've got all our nodules and dermis. Large nodule in the dermis and that large nodule is effacing the epidermis to a skinny little stretched out nothing, right? Uh, no. No, there's acanthosis <laughs> there. How could I be so wrong? So tell me about big nodules that give acanthosis <laughs> rather than effacement of the epidermis. Uh, so you can have a DF, uh, granular cell tumor, or a spitz. So the big three that give you acanthosis rather than effacement of the epidermis would be dermatofibroma, granular cell tumor, and spits. And for this thing that has these ringed lipidized siderophages all through it, what is it? Yeah. A big, big dermatofibroma. So a big funny dermatofibroma or BFDF. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, you see collagen balls around the periphery, which would often be present. Um, ringed lipidized siderophages are virtually pathognomonic for dermatofibroma. And then certainly when you have acanthosis rather than effacement over a um, large neoplasm, it you know, most of them would stretch and efface the epidermis. So it makes you think of the possibility of dermatofibroma, granular cell tumor, and spitz tumor. So I see anastomosing strands with ducts. What are they trapping? You have fat, you have kind of steel gray, what looks like cartilage. Uh, mixed tumor. So mixed tumor, so branching alveolar duct pattern, trapping mesenchymal elements that may be fat, maybe cartilage, maybe collagen, would be mixed tumor skin. And they tend to form a ball whereas mm -hmm. a pinkus tumor tends to be a broad epidermally based neoplasm. Mm -hmm. These are a ball in the dermis, so that's another way they differ. Mm. Kind of has the architectural features of a seborrheic keratosis. So seborrheic keratosis, next case. There's maybe some mm -hmm. nevus cells in there. But they're nevus cells. So is it a nevus or is it a seb? Is it a seb and a nevus? A nevus and a seb? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the answer pretty much to that is who cares, really? Because it's a seb and a nevus, right? And you commonly see them together. And whether it's seb like change in a nevus, or it doesn't matter, right? They're both benign. Um. Mm -hmm. 
So, like crossed perikeratosis. Tell me about what's happening here. It looks like you have a split. A split among acanthocytes, so we refer to that as? Acantholysis. Acantholysis, and those keratinocytes are completely normal and none of them turning pink? No, there's some dyskeratine. So there's acanthalytic dyskeratosis, and you have these round bodies higher up. What would you call those round bodies? Mm. If you were French? Oh, the coron. Coron. <laughs> <laughs> and then the flat things? The grains. The grains. Okay, so this is acanthalytic dyskeratosis. So this is Haley Haley, right? No. Why? I don't see it going. It doesn't have as much like the dilapidated brick. So it's not particularly adapted to dilapidated brick wall pattern. And what color are the the rim around the nucleus in Haley Haley? Only red, only red, only red, only red. Whereas here you've got blue. Right, so you have rims that are blue, and you have rims that are clear. <coughs> Haley Haley only knows how to do red. Right? So you don't have the acanthosis and the dilapidated brick wall of a Haley Haley, plus you have lots of blue and clear rings, whereas Haley Haley only ever does red rings. Okay. So this would be some other form of acanthotic dyskeratosis, Grover's, Darius. Volvo quarrel, dyskeratosis, any of those it could be. Let's find the tissue here. Right, so we have a shea biopsy, very sun damaged skin, um, acanthosis, hyperkeratosis. Acanthosis, hyperkeratosis. Kind of an acellular area there. Granulation tissue on either side of it. CNH. Chondrodermatitis nodularis chronica helicis. Well done. And it's by pattern, and you don't have to see the underlying mm -hmm. collagen. In fact, if you see the underlying collagen, or I'm sorry, the underlying cartilage, um, you really shave too deep. <laughs> <laughs> Tumor. Is that stock differentiation? Hold on. So, <coughs> question of whether maybe or not there's duct differentiation there. Um, it's certainly a blue tumor with not much cytoplasm. Right, chromatin pattern, a little smudgy, and it's forming these long wall-like structures that branch similar to what you would see in trabecular bone. So it's called a trabecular pattern. So what kind of blue tumor characteristically has a trabecular pattern? Merkel. Merkel. So that's a clue to Merkel cell carcinoma. Um, most Merkels are solid in significant portions of the tumor, um, but at least focally, they tend to have these wall-like structures, long seek-like structures, reminiscent of what trabecular bone looks like in pattern, you know, branching long things. And so the term trabecular carcinoma was the early term for a Merkel cell carcinoma. And it's still a helpful clue. Okay. Triculomoma. Triculomoma. Why triculomoma? Uh, you got pale cells um, kind of hanging off the epidermis. The basement membrane thickened. So thick pink basement membrane next to a distinct palisade. palisade. Triculomoma is always palisade. Acrospiroma is never palisade. And then you have the thick base mm -hmm. river zone. That was easy. Well done. Mm -hmm. Triculomoma. Mar marker for? Um, got it. Correct. Big nodule. There's 
big nodule in the dermis, and within that nodule, <coughs> and those cells would be <laughs> what kind of cell? Yeah, neutrophils. So you have palisaded granuloma around the core of neutrophils, so kind of a Stellate abscess, so give me your differential for a stellate abscess in the dermis. Uh, cat scratch, uh, LGG, atypical mycobacteria, tularemia, sporotrichosis. So big ones are cat scratch, LGV, atypical mycobacteria, tularemia, and sporo. So it gives you sort of a rundown of things you have to look for. Don't forget that um, granuloma, angiitis with granulomatosis, of the evil Dr. Wegner <laughs> um, can look similar. In this case, in other sections, there was actually a splinter. So it was splinter yeah, granuloma, mm -hmm. and within the, the splinter, box. there was um, dermatitious mm -hmm. fungus. This is often present in the It's time, Dr. Ells. It is time. You are correct. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you are welcome. Thank you.